Welcome to Film Right Mondays. Again, like I said last week, Monday Challenge is back on. If you do want to get involved, you still have time. You have until March 31st. Check the episode two weeks ago if you want details on that. But now, let's get to some questions. First question, I am directing a short film where there is a kissing scene. How do I make it comfortable for everyone, especially the actors performing the scene? Thanks, Ryan. Stuff like that doesn't have to be awkward. As long as the two people have met and discussed it, they should talk uh, amongst themselves on what they're comfortable with and not. Let them talk it out and figure out what they're going to do as performers, and you're there just to capture their moment. There's no real reason to emphasize this moment and make people feel uncomfortable. If you make it a big deal, that's what's gonna make it awkward. How do you find the balance between being ambitious with your client's project, but at the same time not over-promising and finding yourself in a position where you're not capable of completing the project? That heavily comes from experience, and if I'm being honest, I did that to myself constantly. In all the client projects I did up front, I would get really excited, go very ambitious, as I always did, just put passion, even though it was a client project, just pour my passion into it on how I could make this thing awesome. And then in the end, I would end up going like three or four days without sleeping just to get it done. So it is a learning curve. It's something that you just need to dive into. Try not to overcommit yourself to anything. Use what you know right now to sort of dictate what you can do next. Instead of reaching three rungs past where you should on the ladder, maybe just go with two so you don't kill yourself. You need to be able to deliver. Maybe you'll lose a little sleep in the end while you uh, learn the hard way and through fire, as long as you can just deliver in the end. Advice for aspiring DPs. How to develop a style and perhaps what to have in mind when making a reel. Thanks, really enjoyed the show. For me personally, style is just your taste what you like, what you think looks good. I've never thought in terms of what is my style? How do I develop my style? I have no idea what my style is. People have said that I have an obvious style. I don't personally see it. I just tell stories the way they wanna to be told and those are told in a way that fits my taste, obviously. What I think is good, what I think is funny, scary, cool action moment, looks good, sounds good. It all comes from my personal taste and that is uh, what makes up my style. So I've never thought in those terms. I've just chased trying to perfect what I like as much as possible. I think as a DP, doing photography is a great thing, focusing in on one frame instead of 24. We said that um, recently. So doing that will help you refine your skills, which will develop your style without you really having to think about it. That's just my personal opinion, of course. As far as demo reels go, I, I would say the problem with nine out of 10 demo reels that get sent to me is that they're too long. Not saying that your demo reel needs to be three minutes or under, it could be five minutes if every single shot is gold. But what ends up happening is it seems people want a longer demo reel, so they end up putting shots in there that definitely should not be there. Only put the absolute best shots you have in your demo reel. If you put even one eh, shot that's really going to throw people because they think that you think that that shot is a 10. So make sure that every shot you put in there is a 10 for the level you're currently at. Any recommendation on digital composing software? Right now I'm using Cubase. Before that I was using uh, Ableton Live, both of which I use because my composer, Daniel James, uh, he says Ableton Live is better when you're just trying to manipulate already recorded uh, sound and then Cubase is better when you are recording from scratch when you're using VSTs and things like that. I really love Cubase a lot. I use Contact 5 with uh, virtual instruments in there. Uh, so that, that would be my recommendation. But I mean, most DAWs will handle MIDI. It just depends on how you want to record it, I suppose. Pro Tools is another great one. But for me personally, I would suggest Cubase, although it is pretty pricey. Last question, what do you think is the most common mistake critics and the audience make when they talk about filmmaking and movies? It's, all, it's always weird for me to make a comment on something like this because it's like, who am I? I'm someone who's trying to become a filmmaker. I mean, I make short films and things like that, but I've never made a feature. I have one toe in Hollywood. I've done a few things out there, but I'm not making major feature films in Hollywood. So I always feel a little, uh, a little bit like a fake when I comment on things like this. But in my personal opinion, um, my subjective personal opinion, I think a, a big problem right now is the cynicism, arrogance, and even ignorance that goes into a lot of film critique and even things like a lot of the film essays that are out right now. The way that they're addressing films, how they, you know, I have no problem with talking about not liking a film. I say I don't like films all the time. There's a lot of films that I personally even hate. I, thought, I think they're garbage, but that doesn't make it true. 
That just makes in my subjective opinion that that movie is garbage. Of course, there are some that, you know, it's pretty objective that it's not so great, but that's few and far between. There's a lot of people that the movie that I think is terrible and worthless is their favorite film. So that gives that film great value because that film has a lot of value to them. Uh, it makes them forget about their day. And film has two different sides for me. You have the artistic side, that art form that can inform how you see the world, that can, that can show you empathy, uh, other walks of life, and then you have the entertainment side that allows you to shut your brain off and forget about how much life sucks sometimes. Uh, when things are going really bad, there's nothing better than throwing on an Indiana Jones style movie and just feeling good. And that's when those movies have tremendous value. It's almost like therapy for a lot of people. So to, you know, it's one of the reasons why we stopped film state, because then to go and bash these films, I think is wrong in the way that people are doing it. Not to say you don't like it, of course, critique is totally fine, but there's this arrogance and ignorance when it comes to talking about these movies, like some of these film essays, and I do like film essays, these video essays, but a lot of them talk about it as if they know exactly what the film should have done, that it's, it's objective fact that this film was bad because they did this, this music was bad because they did it like this, and this is what the filmmaker should have done. And that is incredibly arrogant coming from people who aren't even filmmakers themselves. They haven't made a feature film, so there's ignorance there and even knowing what it takes to make that land for an audience or how hard that is to make land and a dismissive nature that goes into you know, you know casting aside how much blood, sweat, and tears these people put into a film. Even a bad film is incredibly hard to make. There's tons of blood, sweat, tears, and passion that even go into films that fail. So to dismiss it like that too, uh, I think is is really terrible and also I think dangerous for up and coming filmmakers. I think the landscape that's being created, the mentality that's being created because of how a lot of people are talking about film as of late due to the you know social media landscape where every voice is extremely loud. Um, I think that's really damaging for new and upcoming filmmakers that might take that video essay as actual fact and not opinion because they present it like that. They present it that this is how film is, this is how that is, period. It's never said, here's my personal subjective opinion, you know, take it with a grain of salt. If that was the case, then that would be fine. But they're putting it in a way that's phrasing it to the young up and coming filmmaker that this is fact and that's going to curb how people think. Even things like CinemaSin, I think is horribly dangerous for up and coming filmmakers and I'm worried on where film is gonna go because of things like that. Because I think that amount of cynicism, again, my personal subjective opinion, could lead to the erosion of that childlike wonder and magic that you get from early spielberg -er films like E.T. and Jaws and Indiana Jones and tons of other films just like it. Uh, that's my big concern with all that anyway. There's nothing more discouraging than a pile of overdue paperwork just sitting there staring at you while you try to do anything you enjoy at all. Well, our friends over at FreshBooks have just launched an all new version of their cloud accounting software that will give you more time to do the work that you love and not feel discouraged by the paperwork demon. FreshBooks has been redesigned from the ground up and custom built for the way that you work. It's the easiest way to be more productive, organized, and most importantly, get paid quickly. The all new FreshBooks is not only ridiculously easy to use, it's also packed full of powerful features create and send professional looking invoices in less than 30 seconds, set up online payments, and with just a couple of clicks, get paid up to four days faster. You see when your client has seen your invoice and put an end to the guessing games. Right now, FreshBooks is offering a free 30-day unrestricted trial to film rioters. To claim that, go to freshbooks.com forward slash film riot and enter film riot in the how did you hear about us section. Logo. So that's it for today, which means it's time for my suggestion of the week. This one is just masterclass everything on there. These guys just keep putting out gold. They have the Dustin Hoffman class, the uh, uh, Kevin Spacey class, the Aaron Sorkin class, and now the Hans Zimmer class, which is out now. They just released all the videos, so I'm pretty sure you can buy it, but I've been re-watching the Aaron Sorkin classes as well, and there's just so many great gold nuggets in there. No, they're not sponsored. I've never talked to these people. I do not know them. I just love it that much, so definitely check it out. They're about a hundred bucks a class, but if you could swing it, it really is worth it. Until next week, don't forget to write, shoot, edit, repeat.